Everyone loves the summer sun, but we also know that skin protection is crucial. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the U.S. So what are the best ways to protect yourself and how can you recognize the possible signs? Joining us to share some very important advice is dermatologist Dr. Cameron Roxar. Dr. Roxar, thank you so much for being here today. Good morning. So do you think it's surprising for a lot of people to hear that skin cancer is so common? Yeah, I don't think people realize that skin cancer is actually the most common cancer that is, there's out there. Uh, in the United States alone, more than 3.5 million cases of skin cancer are discovered each year in 2 million individuals. Uh, and actually, it's estimated that um, one in five uh, Americans in their course of their lifetime will develop skin cancer. As a matter of fact, the incidence of skin cancer is greater than the combined incidence of lung, breast, colon, uh, and uh, stomach cancer. That is devastating and obviously something that everyone needs to be aware of. What are the most important steps that everyone needs to take in protecting their skin? The most important thing to realize is that skin cancer or the incidence of skin cancer is directly related to sun exposure. As a matter of fact, it's been shown that the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation is cumulative. Similar to what we think about uh, x-rays having damaging effects, it's the same thing uh, with, with skin. So the skin cells you know, will, will reach a certain threshold of damage where, uh, where they kind of, uh, the DNA gets damaged and, the, you know, and someone will start developing skin cancer. Um, the most important thing is to realize that people need to avoid the sun. And some of the important tips to realize is that, for example, in the hours where the sun is directly vertical, is to avoid sun exposure. And those are the hours between 12 and 3. Uh, it's also important to realize that uh, people need to wear sunblock, and, but it's important to really look for certain ingredients in sunblocks. And I tell my patients that the important ingredients in a sunblock are zinc. Mm -hmm. titanium or an ingredient parcel 1789. Most people ask, well, what's the right SPF to use? And I generally tell people that if you're using an SPF of 30 or more, that's adequate, but you need to look for one of those ingredients. Another common misconception by people is that people think that you're going to put your sunblock on and go out in the sun all day, and that one application is going to protect you from the sun. Well, that's not true. Studies have actually shown that sunblock wears off in about two to three hours. So it's really important to repeat liberal applications of sunblock so every two to So even if you're hours. not going into the water, you need to reapply. 100%. And, and that brings me to another point, mm -hmm. which is that also most people think that if uh, you're not directly in the sun, or if it's a cloudy day, you're not supposed to wear sunblock. Mm. Well, that's not true because UV radiation can actually penetrate through the, through the clouds. So it's important to really wear sunblock every day, whether it's sunny, cloudy, summer, or winter. All year round. All year round. Right. We're talking about it now because it's summer and people are out a lot, but we should be wearing sunscreen even in the winter. Correct? You know, in the summer once, in m when people are on the beach, there's actually, if people want to be extra cautious, there are actually manufacturers of clothing companies that make SPF Clothing. You know, clothing, and so you know, especially for young kids, mm -hmm. that's really important because it has been shown that um, early on the uh, the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation are greater. So, blistering history of sunburns in kids have been directly related to development of skin cancer down the Later road. Later on, very very important inform information. Now, of course, everyone wants to know what the signs are that something might be wrong, that they might be developing some sort of skin cancer. Moles are very, uh, you know, someone sees a mole and they get very upset. W what are the signs that you as a doctor can point to and say that needs to be taken care of? In general, the, more, the most common three skin cancers are melanoma, mm -hmm and melanoma looks like a mole, like mm -hmm. a pigmented spot, uh, and basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. So let's talk about melanomas first. Melanoma looks like a mole that's atypical. And generally what we speak about is about the A, B, C, D, E's of moles. Mm -hmm. A stands for asymmetry. Asymmetry means that if you cut an imaginary line in a mole, one half of the mole doesn't look like the other. So if you notice a mole where one, you know, it's asymmetric, that's something that needs to be brought to the attention of a doctor. Mm -hmm. The second sign is being border irregularity. Generally, moles have a nice, smooth contour. If a mole has an irregular border, that's something that one needs to be aware of. C stands for color. If there's more than one color in a mole, different shades of brown or black, or, or if there's devel development of a new speck or a new color in a mole. D stands for diameter. That's diameter greater than 0.6 centimeters. Generally, that should be thought of as being larger than, than the surface of an eraser, of a, of a pencil eraser. Okay. And lastly, E stands for evolving. Evolving means changing. So if you've got a mole that all of a sudden is doing weird things, is growing, developing new colors, it's bleeding, it's changing, that's again something that warrants That's a red biopsy. flag. 
So that's for melanoma. Melanoma is a pigmented uh, skin cancer which can actually be deadly. Um, and the other two common skin cancers are basal cell and squamous cell carcinomas. Basal cell carcinomas generally look, they look like pimples that don't go away. So what I tell patients is if you have a little pimple that's there for more than one to two months, that's probably not a pimple. Ah. So that's something that needs to be uh, brought to the attention of a doctor. Uh, lastly, squamous cell carcinomas look like red scaly patches. And so another good analogy to, to, real, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to understand is if uh, you have a dry spot, and that dry spot is not going away with moisturizers after a month or two, it's probably not a dry spot. And, and these can happen anywhere on the body, right? It can happen anywhere on the body. Uh, th it, they are more commonly found in sun damage areas, sun, okay. which includes face, neck, and chest, as mm -hmm. well as arms and legs. Right. But, but they can happen uh, anywhere on they the body surface They can happen anywhere. Area. Can they happen on the, the back as well? And Absolutely. Yeah, any, they can okay. happen on the back, and people do get a lot of sun on their backs, too. You know, yeah, right. It's one of the right. areas, shoulders and back, that generally people don't protect. And lastly, the other thing I wanted to mention was actinic keratosis. Actinic keratosis are precancerous spots. Mm -hmm. They're generally little tiny specks of uh, redness and scaliness, and those have been shown to uh, turn into squamous cell carcinoma. So those are something that people should also pay attention. So you to. should be doing your own self examinations as often as possible, but obviously going to a doctor. For one hundred percent, people yeah. should look at their skin mm -hmm. and be cognizant of the different lesions and moles in their skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is also recommended that people. Uh, uh, have their skin checked annually once a year Absolutely. for a skin cancer screening. Dr. Cameron Rockstar, thank you so much for all of that. And don't forget, you can follow us, ABC yeah. News Now, on Facebook and Twitter just by searching ABC News Now.